I teach writing, my main hope for my students is that they're going to leave my class feeling like their lives are a little bit easier. <laughs> I try to give really practical tools so that my students can go home and write and, and sort of eliminate that lost in the woods feeling. So one more thing you'll want to consider when you're trying to pinpoint your character's desire is that he needs an active want, not a passive want. Not just, I don't want what I have, but here's what I want instead. I think a lot of writers feel blocked, um, even if they don't realize they feel blocked. And I think a lot of people come to writing class or come looking for writing instruction because they feel a lot of fear around sitting down to write. Okay, is that better? Wait. Yeah. Okay. I didn't get into that today in this class, but that's something that I really try to help my students with. Why improv and writing? Well, because improv helps you get past that internal editor. I've always had a problem with it. Hey, I got you a gift. Oh, I've always wanted a baby alligator. Oh, yeah. Baby alligator. Great. Great. So cute. And improv helped me to embrace failure, to not be afraid to fail. Um, we like to say in improv that when we make a mistake, we just say, ta-da! And um, that has really helped me as a writer, too, because I'm not sitting there criticizing my work all the time. I'm just, just letting it come out and then, then editing it later. And I could serve... Okay. Oh my gosh. A copy of Naomi, what's her name? And if you fall on your face, you're still moving forward. <laughs> so that's, that's our philosophy. Im improv can explode patterns of thinking all the time. We lived in Albuquerque, but we were all from somewhere else. There was an ice bucket on the table, the gin and the tonic water kept going around, and we somehow got on the subject of love. They're all from somewhere else. They're all from somewhere else. So they've come together, and there's this um, sense of contingency. And I'm the editor of the Kenyon Review and a professor of English at Kenyon College. Uh, and I taught a workshop on beginnings uh, here and how important beginnings are to successful short stories and really to memoirs too. My friend Herb McGinnis, a cardiologist, was talking. What's going on there? Past tense is more traditional usually because that's the way we usually tell stories. Something happened to me. You know, any anytime you tell a story in the present tense, it's obviously an illusion. All right, it's an ongoing action. Was talking. Now that doesn't seem like much. I hope to get people thinking in a different line about how stories work. We all need stories, we all tell stories, we all use stories. Um, but a successful short story is in fact a very deliberate technical artifice. The four of us were sitting around his kitchen table drinking gin. It was Saturday afternoon. Sunlight filled the kitchen from the big window behind the sink. That's what beginnings really do. They plunge into something that is full of drama and conflict and tension. Even if that may not be apparent immediately, it's got to actually be there in retrospect. Every word we say is all of its meaning. So we say, well, I meant it as this. Does it matter? Your reader will hear every meaning. A memoir is not a general autobiography about you know, every little piece of your life. Let's say you draw the four of diamonds, so you might write about diamond, or you might write about the four noble truths or the four directions. One of the difficulties we encounter when we sit down to write a memoir is that we begin chasing after ourselves. More precisely, we keep running into the question, who is the me that I'm writing about? As you write, you become more of a discerning reader and you see what works and what doesn't work. So if you read something, if you've been writing for quite a while and then you read a, a memoir, that isn't grabbing, grabbing you, you think, oh, you can look and see why. What is the, how is the writer failing to hook me in?